In the immortal words of the who, who are you? Or maybe a better way to phrase it would be, who am I? We spend a lot of time developing our own image of who we are and presenting that to the world. And, and uh, so having an understanding of our own self-concept is really important as a communicator in the way that we uh, deliver and send our messages and in the way that we interpret messages from others and understanding uh, the role of self-concept in that is really important. So that's what we're going to focus on in this short video uh, is understanding the self-concept, really just focusing in on what is the self-concept and what are some of the different attributes of that. So first of all, what is the self-concept? That's, that's the question. So I want you to do me a favor if you have a piece of scrap paper or even just in your own head for a second here, I want you to think about five things that are true about you. Okay. Five things that you would say objectively are true about you. Uh, you know, it could be, could be anything. It could be your tall, it could be your brother. You could be your, a mom. It could be you like volleyball. It could be you're a good singer, anything at all, whatever it is, just write down or think about five things that are true about me that I would say are objectively true about me. So the reason we're doing this is because that's the start of and a part of really what we would call your self-concept. The self-concept is just this relatively stable set of ideas that you hold to be true about yourself. So it's relatively stable. It's, it's, it's takes a form and, and usually holds that for quite a while and doesn't change easily. It can be changed, but it, it, it's stubborn. It wants to stay the same. And there are things that you hold to be true about yourself. Now that doesn't mean that they actually are true, but in your mind they are. As we'll talk about, the self-concept is not always accurate. It's not always objective, um, but it's it's the stable set of things that you hold to be true about yourself. So those things that you wrote down, that's your self-concept, or at least a part of it. Those things that you say, these, this is who I am. This is true about me. That's a part of your self-concept. Then, if we wanted to, to to then go a little further and differentiate between the self-concept and the self-esteem, we could then take that list of things that you said are true about yourself. So so bring that up in your mind again. Uh, bring up that list or, and look at it or or have pull it up in your mind again. What are the five things that you wrote down? And then ask yourself about each of those things. How do I feel about that? How do I feel about that? Does that make me a better person? Do I think that's a good trait or something positive about myself? Or is it something that I'm that I try and hide that I don't feel as good about myself um, because of that thing? When we start to think about how we feel about each of those things that are part of our self-concept, that's our self-esteem then. Our self-esteem tells us this is a good thing or this is a bad thing and this is something we should let out and let the world know or this is something we need to kind of, you know, tamp down and hide a little bit right, about ourselves. So that's the difference between the self-concept and the self-esteem. Again, self-concept is the relatively stable set of ideas that you hold to be true about yourself and your self-esteem is how do you feel about each of those things. So now that we have an understanding of what the self-concept is specifically and, and what self-esteem is, but let's talk a little bit about what, uh, what happens to develop the self-concept, how that self-concept develops. Well, there are a variety of factors in the development of the self-concept, one of which is the personality and, and biology of the person. So, you know, there are certain things that we're just born with, right? It comes through DNA, it comes through, it comes through the genes, through our genetics, through our parents, and, uh, and some of that is just biology. And, and so we see ourselves, I mean, if you're super tall or you're super uh, good singer or whatever, that may be something that you inherited from your parents. Um, but it could just be to your, your personality traits. People tend to behave like their parents, but genetics are very, very strong things. So um, our personality and our biology, though, will have a massive influence on our, on our self-concept. Uh, also, the reflected appraisal, which basically means uh, how do other people see you or and what impression do they give you about, you know, if, if they're judging you, for example, if they're holding up scorecards, what do people say about you? And just in general, uh, are you a good person? Are you, you know, uh, somebody that people like to be around or they somebody that they avoid being around. Um, and then more specifically, you could get into different traits too. How do people feel about your singing? How do feel, people feel about your golfing? How do people feel about your parenting or whatever it is? Um, that's, that's reflected appraisal. The, the input and feedback we get from others around us is that reflected appraisal. This is really especially powerful for where groups um, and individuals that we call our significant others. Um, now, it doesn't have to be somebody we're romantically involved with. Uh, significant others, anybody whose opinion we especially value. Could be our parents, could be our siblings, could be our best friends, could be, you know, those people in particular, when they say something, it really hits home and really um, has an impact on our self-concept, positively or negatively. Um, so that's reflected appraisal, though, the input that we get and the feedback we get from from those around us.
that help shape our self-concept as well. And we also tend to engage in social comparison at times. So we, we gauge ourselves against society in different ways right? and, and, and things we see around us. So um, for me, um, it would it would be a better comparison for me socially to, to go down to the Y and compare myself as a basketball player to other you know middle aged white guys down at the Y who are in my same you know kind of shape which is not very good my shape is round right so um, I'd be much better off in terms of my self concept and that'd be much more realistic for me to do that and have an idea of where I'm at as a basketball player than to compare myself with somebody like LeBron James right or any professional basketball player or anybody with any basketball skill at all. Doing that's going to, you know, really damage my self-concept if we, if we have inappropriate social comparison groups. Now, that doesn't mean we should, shouldn't stretch ourselves and push ourselves toward goals, but at this point, I'm not going to be LeBron James, right? So I need to find a reasonable social comparison group for my skills as a basketball player. And we need to do that uh, for the uh, health of our self-concept as well, be aware of our social comparison groups. Then there are also culture and gender roles. Culture and gender uh, and culture in particular influences everything about our life and everything about our communication. So well, we look around at, at our culture for uh, to see um, what's appropriate, and what's good, quote unquote good. Right. Uh, but we do need to be careful because as this is contrary to what you see in the media. We are not all supposed to look the same. Uh, so we have this issue of, you know, well, I'm looking around at my culture and I'm seeing that I'm out of the norm. Right. If, if this is the office of rules and norms, I'm outside of the norm. And that makes me feel bad about myself. But the truth is, in some ways, we're not all supposed to be the same. So um, we need to be cautious with that as well. But our culture will give us kind of those gu and those guardrails about this is this is who we are as a, as a culture and as a people and uh, try and stay within those things. And then you have some people who intentionally work outside of that. And that's part of their that's part of their self concept is to do that. But uh, but how we fit into that culture, those culture in general roles will have an impact on our self concept as well. So there's some different characteristics of the self-concept, some different things we need to keep in mind and understand about the self-concept. Um, first of all, self-concepts are multifaceted. We have more than one self -concept. I mean, we, we, we have more than one self, so to speak. Um, in different situations, we will let these different selves out and and uh, and show different sides of our personality probably and and so but we have the self-concept is multifaceted we don't just have one self-concept or one self we have multiple selves and it's not a psychological break or anything like that it's just how the human um, personality is made up self-concepts are also partially subjective we mentioned i mentioned this when we talked about the definition there there are these things there it's there's these things that you hold to be true about yourself, that doesn't mean they actually are, right? We need to differentiate between objective and subjective. Objective says these are oranges. That's objective. Whether you like oranges or not, those are oranges. Subjective says I love oranges. I do not love oranges. So my subjective view of this, um, of this, uh, of this pile of oranges will be different than the person on the right. They love oranges. I don't. But even so, objectively, we can agree that they are oranges. So we need to, to consider things uh, th th and remember that the self-concept is subjective, right? It's possible for us to look at it and, and see something different than somebody else. You know, somebody else may tell us we're really good at something, and in our mind we have it fixed that we're not. So we need to be aware of that and aware that the self our own self-concept can be off at times, right? can be incorrect almost at times, right? Uh, self-concepts, I, I mentioned this before too, are enduring, but they're changeable. They're a relatively stable set of concepts, but they can be changed. They, they, their, their, uh, their uh, notion is to stay the same, but they can be changed for sure. So this is a reference if you're familiar with the, the movie The Princess Bride. That's hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. Right? It's a reference to the movie The Princess Bride, and there's a character in her name Inigo Montoya, and he spends his entire life. And this is Inigo. He's on the left. Inigo Montoya is on the left, and he spends his entire life going after this one goal of killing the six-fingered man. And spoiler alert, he does. In the movie, he gets to, he gets to the six-fingered man and he does kill him. And he avenges his father's death. And afterwards, he's talking to his friend Wesley at the window here. And he's saying, you know, I've spent my entire life chasing this one thing. Now I don't know who I am. Without that, who am I? His self-concept is enduring. His self-concept was, I am the greatest swordsman in the world. I'm Inigo Montoya. I'm here to kill the six-fingered man. And that's it, right? And once that was done, his self-concept was having trouble moving on and shifting. And we've got to be able to have that flexibility and, and you know, work on that flexibility. It takes time. Too. We can do that, though. 
So this is just to give you an overview of the self-concept and what it is. Now that we have an understanding of what the self-concept is, we can get to some different aspects of how the self impacts communication and, and what role it plays in communication. If you have questions about the self, self-concept, anything related to, to communication at all, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, I hope that you've done some evaluating your self-concept and self-esteem and have a better understanding of what it is um, so that we move forward um, as uh, and increasing our communication competence, we can uh, understand the role that self-concept would play in that.